Look at those beans. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's a thing of beauty to a bean lover. But, uh... It's gotta go. Yeah. Look, Mom, your garden came back. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle and a lot of sweat equity. <laughs> mm -hmm. And new and improved. Yes. Yeah. Uh, since we now have the extra space, not only did I move everything back to this general area, but I took... Uh, we, you, wow. <laughs> took several... We all did. Yeah, several uh, uh, of my other roses from various sections and put them all in here to make it a little bit easier for me to keep an eye on them and water them and cut the flowers, which they're in dire need of right now. This has expanded itself, and uh, I moved my peppers over, and we made little mini arches. Let's go look over. Okay. Uh, we took some mason's ladders and um, bent them into little mini tunnels, arches, I should say, to support the peppers. We did that last year too, but uh, I have more peppers this year and some new varieties and they're they've grown like those they've grown much taller right. than than last year so uh, i've been moving them around from place to place and trying to stake them up so for the rest of the summer <laughs> this is their new home and their new support system uh, next year i'd like to put in a couple more archways and grow the peppers under the archways and see how that goes well, you did do that this time, but you combined the peppers with other plants. Up against my dahlias and some of the vegetables. And uh, the vegetables took off, especially the beans over there. Let's go look at the beans. And uh, uh, it's, it's like nighttime underneath there. There really aren't that many bean plants, but they just exploded. And... Uh, Looks beautiful <laughs> from here. Very lush. Yes, yes. I have some cukes and zucchini down there, and I have one lone tomato plant here. Uh, but everything's being crowded out. My thought, my original thought was, well, I put some vining veggies over in this side, which, when the sun comes directly overhead, would give the dahlias a little bit of shade. Um, which it did. Yes, but unfortunately, too much shade. <laughs> and, I mean, look at how, how, I mean, this in and of itself is gorgeous. It's beautiful. But, like I say, it's like nighttime in here. And, as you can see, the dahlias are now growing straight up, reaching for the sun. And what is, oh, this is a zucchini plant, see? from all the way down there, over here. See where those big leaves are? That's the zucchini and it's come all the way here. That's at least a 15 foot stretch for that yes. zucchini. Yes, yes. Um, so all these things I'm learning. <laughs> Every time I plant something new, I learn something new. Uh, all right, sometimes so it works, sometimes it doesn't. So for next year, your thought is to just put the same type on one row. These two archways, these two tunnels will be strictly for dahlias. So I could space them out a little bit because they're they're shoulder to shoulder down here and they really do need a little bit more space. Uh, so dahlias would be on these two. I'll do another archway over there for peppers 
four peppers, and I could intersperse a couple climbing veggies in there. That would be all right. But then another tunnel, which would be primarily for uh, beans, peas, uh, zucchini, cucumbers, melons. Oh, I have melons down there. Let's go look at the melons. <laughs> Ta-da! Isn't that cute? Tiny little melons. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now that you said these are like single serving melons? Yes, they're 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 small. Uh-huh. So theoretically so you can grow them up a trellis without support. The bigger melons, when they reach a certain size, then you have to wrap them in stockings or some kind of stretchy stretchy material and anchor it to here so it doesn't fall off. Okay. Uh but these these are Personal size. <laughs> Snack size. Them. Yeah, yeah. One person size. Okay. Uh, so I was begin. This is the third planting. I planted them at the time they were supposed to be planted, but we had such cool and rainy weather, they didn't do anything. So uh, I had to replant them, reseed three times. This is the third time, and uh, it seems to be doing okay now. So next year I will wait until it gets later in the season before I even put them in the ground. And what about your squash? How's it doing? It's doing very well. And the, um, the one that had fours in it? Uh, you didn't pull that one? No, they're still hanging in there. Here, see, here's some squash growing up here. This is the way they normally grow in a sea. We'll just move that down so Maybe he'll straighten out a little bit. So they're supposed to be curly cued? Well, if they grow along the ground, they will grow shaped like a C. Uh, there are some zucchini growing over here. And as you can see, this one is able to grow vertically, just like the other one that we took the picture of. Mm -hmm. They're doing very well. I really like the taste and the texture and the flavor of these zucchinis over the regular zucchini squash. Mm -hmm. um, I shouldn't say taste because squash to me has no taste. I'm not really a big fan of squash. It adds bulk and moisture, <laughs> but it doesn't have any flavor unless you cook it up with some onions and peppers and something. Jazz it up. It, yeah, it, it, it really has no flavor. But uh, the last one I harvested, I uh, grated and used that in the snickerdoodle uh, zucchini bread. And that was good. I like the texture of these. They're far less watery than uh -huh. the regular zucchini. And I could see where you could pickle these or uh, use them in uh, stews or soups. Um, and have a better and have more substance to them so uh, or even for pickling and there are no seeds the seeds are down here in the bulb and they don't have many at all okay so I really which I guess contributes to them having more of a firmer texture mm -hmm. when you cut them up because there are no seeds I would I would plant these again next year but I put tin foil around the stems early on, <laughs> just like those. They're they're doing okay too. For a while there, the bees were not pollinating, so I was finding squash like there's a squash blossom down there. There were squash blossoms all on the ground and in the pots. But I guess the bees are back because things are starting to get pollinated again. So uh, that's a good sign. So like I say, one whole archway will be for vining vegetables, and one will be for peppers. And that should work out much better. So the solution to all your problems for tomatoes and squash is just more arches? Just more arches, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I totally am enamored with these structures. I really am. Uh, it's not just the physical appearance. It's, it's just that for what I grow in my climate, they're very very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. I like them. I'm very pleased with them. It gives you lots of options. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. So you're going to hack the beans off? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Um, 
<laughs> you gonna trim them out or just take the whole stinking thing out? Uh, I'm thinking maybe of just taking them out. I'm not really a fan of green beans either, taste-wise. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should grow more things you like, Mom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'd rather invest the space next year, uh, do an early planting, very early planting of peas or snap peas or something of that nature. Beans, again, I think I have a problem with green veggies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Your fruits and veggies need color? Yeah, yeah. Sweetness, flavor, taste, uh -huh. you know, something like that. Uh, green yep. beans are, you know, it's fiber. <laughs> it's technically food. Yes, yes, it is, it is. And I'm not disparaging the bean and the bean lovers, the green bean lovers. Uh, but, you know, I can get a whole big bag of organic green beans from Costco. Mm -hmm. So the few times that I would use green beans, that's a whole lot easier. I would rather uh, devote my time and energy, uh, my watering, my trimming, all of that to something that gives me greater pleasure than a green bean. So, so maybe I'll just take them all out. That will give the, uh, the, my lone tomato plant some, some space. Um, the zucchinis, this is zucchini, these, these big leaves. It's from down there, and it's up and growing over. So, so it's intertwined with the beans now. Yes, yes, look, here's, a, here's another squash, and here's another squash. So, uh, see, they tend to grow in a C shape. And what kind of, uh, what's the, what type of thing uh, is that? Zucchini Rampicante, I believe, was the name of this. We'll put it down there on the bottom of the screen. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is another one, uh, Trombocino squash. They're the same thing, just two different names, but it's the same plant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an Italian vining squash. Okay. So, uh, same exact growth pattern, you know, very prolific, as you can see. Uh, I did not realize that, I mean, it would grow 10, 12, 14 feet long, which is fine, as long as there was, there was nothing else there, so. But you haven't sprayed at all this year. No, no, I have not sprayed anything. I'm trying a different tactic of not spraying. Uh, all of my, anything that I would spray with is organic mm -hmm. uh, and safe for the bees. Um, but I'm trying not to do that. And when the roses were attacked early on this season, uh, with, I don't know how many different kinds of caterpillars we had. There was a bunch. And beetles and, and all sorts of things. I just waited until they left on their own. And then I trimmed everybody down, gave them some fertilizer to help them recoup, and uh, told them to rest and recover. <laughs> <laughs> rest and recuperate. So, uh, Which they did. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're starting to come back, putting on some new growth, putting on some new buds. They do not look as lush as they would have probably if I had sprayed. But I'm really trying, I mean, even the organic sprays are going to disrupt the whole um, ecological uh, balance of things. So uh, I keep hoping the birds will help me out and praying mantis will, will arrive in, you know, droves. And dragonflies. And dragonflies. We're giving it a shot this year. Uh, so far, it seems to be working. Everything seems to be good. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, the roses are not looking as lush as they would have if I had sprayed. But I just feel better not having to spray if I can get away with it. I just have to be patient and, patient and let Mother Nature do her thing. Mm -hmm. And hopefully she'll reach a status quo where 
I don't mind some damage on the leaves or losing a few flowers. Uh, when the bugs decimate an entire plant, then then I get upset. So we'll we'll try that this year and and see how it works. So.